Hey everyone, welcome to we call the wacky world of EDC Kickstarter. And it's not all Kickstarter, there's a couple of the other funding type sites as well. I made sort of an off the cuff, what became a bit of a gag portion of a video review I shot yesterday about Kickstarter knives, because there's a certain pattern a lot of the, the Kickstarter knives use, or at least they were using until I was, I guess, out of the loop. And I've just checked on Kickstarter, I just did like a, a general search just to see what the current state of it is. And it's a bit wild, it, there's a whole lot going on. So I thought um, we'd have a bit of a laugh at some of the, the some of the fails and a bit of speculation over maybe what works and what doesn't work. And um, uh, we will delve into some truly um, funny comments as well. And um, there'll be a couple of heroes of this story emerge too. So I've got everything open. Just gonna go through a few tabs of some that I thought might be interesting to talk about. And um, we'll go from there. So hopefully it's a fun video. Let's get into it. Righto, so the first one we're gonna look at is the Ion by Glow Rhino, the glowing tritium keychain knife. There is a shitload of keychain fobs and bits and bobs on Kickstarter. Um, these guys have just worked out what tritium is and it is exciting, if you ask them at least. So tritium is like an isotope that glows for a fair amount of time, you know, um, provides illumination on some decent watches and stuff like that. So the Glow Rhino, let's look at this. So $40 they're after uh, for the early bird special. They seem to be doing, oh no, they've only 12, 12 people have signed up for that so far. Um, so yeah, looking at it, it's what are, what are they selling us here? A lot of these Kickstarters seem to be fairly, I, they look very sort of Chinese made um, and then lots of pomp in the writing kind of thing. So, they, you know, they're mentioning military grade material in your hands, um, you know, saying military grade. So I guess they're hoping everyone starts thinking, yay, durability. So why we don't need to worry about predators in these modern times, lifestyles, modern challenges, um, bridging gaps between it's all of this. They all, when you look at that many of these, they all sound the same. Um, shifting paradigms and whatnot. So it's a very small little tool, as you can see there, very much keychain size. It's a Sandvik steel blade. So they're dropping the Sandvik word because it's kind of associated with Swedish, then associated with quality, perhaps. So um, your Sandvik steel app, and there is the money shot. There we are, look at that. You've got a little square enabling you to find your knife. The power of radiation. So well, the funniest thing I found skimming through this one is, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's a fine little pocket tool, whatever. I love the risks and challenges part, right? So risks and challenges is generally where you say, look, we're doing a lot of CNC machining. Um, we have one supplier um, who, you know, is got lots of other stuff on, so they might cause some delays or something like that. That's usually what you put in. These guys are like, no, no, no. We need to educate, our challenge is educating everyone on the power of tritium. These guys, I think they might be eating and drinking the tritium as well because they fucking love the stuff. So we've got um, a bit more of a blurb about how great tritium is. That is the challenge, educating us all about tritium, which I guess would be a challenge if um, most of us in the EDC community didn't already have watches with glowing you know, bits on them. And, Knives with the paracord fobs with tritium bits attached. But at any rate, they're selling it to everyone. So that is their main challenge. So they've got a lot of confidence in the rest of their machining, shipping, marketing, and direct sales capabilities. So good on them, the Glow Rhino team. So that's the first one there, the power of tritium. Uh, next one, we've got a bit more of a niche knife. This knife is called the Hexi. And this knife is sold as the knife, where are we? It's a folding knife for hexagon lovers. So all of you lovers of hexagons, um, you folks with hexagons, you know, hexagon merch everywhere and hexagon shirts and hexa hexagon wall decals and your wallet's a hexagon and you, you named your kid hexagon and then you had another kid and you also called it hexagon because you love hexagons so much. This is the knife for you guys. So they have gone and put a, they love the C-Tech. They've gone and found some C-Tech and they've made knife scales out of it. C-Tech's like a, I think it's a polymer with like a, a wire mesh embedded into it. And then they've gone, no, no, no. Let's put a C-Tech-esque pattern on our blade. So, and there's more sort of wanky Kickstarter stuff about 
most common elements in our body, carbon, all that sort of stuff, you're basically getting a knife that is made of 4116 steel uh, with a hexagon pattern on it. So um, here we go. 1.4116 stainless steel cryogenic treatment though um, at 58 Rockwell. So what do you what do you get here? So the early bird special is 75 euros. So remember in cold steel sells knives in that steel for about uh, 20 euros, uh, 20 American dollars too probably. So if you love hexagons, you're happy to pay a 55 euro hexagon tax, uh, then this may be the knife for you. Cool, so now we're moving on to this company, Stat Gear, and I notice there's a few companies that do lots of Kickstarter-y stuff. So there's Stat Gear that do it, and then there's um, Quiet Carry, they do a few, and I think Quiet Carry are relatively successful. I've had a couple of good or goodish experiences with their knives. Uh, James Brands do a couple as well. Um, this, go, this mob here seem a little bit more like they're kind of maybe just drop shipping stuff from San Renmu. I, I don't know. The stuff that these guys have never looks that great. So this is this knife is apparently the epitome of EDC. Compact, fast, and durable. It's a flipper knife. It's been featured on all the shill sites. None of these sites that like... You know what? I see knife news there. I don't think they've had a bit of knife news um, that wasn't the company paying them to say, hey, I've got some news for you. Um, for a long, long time, but um, there you go. Um, we could definitely do with a bit of a, a proper knife news outlet in the world would be nice. Like someone actually investigates companies that maybe not doing, not the, not referring about to stat gear at all, but I would just have loved for years ago, someone to have said, hey, this company, Quartermaster, doesn't seem quite right, <laughs> but whatevs. I'm not going to do it, so I guess I should stop talking about it. So yeah, stat gear have a couple of different blades. I just, they all just seem very like, yeah, very San Renmu. Not that that's a bad thing, but... And this is only a $38 early bird knife, so that's cool. Just, I've noticed in a couple of their photos there, like that edge on this photo here. That's... I, I don't know. I, they, I, maybe they're not selling it to me, but it just doesn't really seem like the kind of photo I'd put in a, like the best shot of the knife because you're trying to sell it. So there you go. So stack here, they've got this one. All sorts of kind of rugged, uh, hey, I do stuff like that when I manufacture uses for my knife videos. So, <laughs> you know, I suck too, guys, don't worry. Um, and there we go, so flippers, ball bearings, all sort of just Kickstarter speak. Uh, most ergonomic comfort and blade control in any folder of this size. Some big claims, all that good stuff, but it's a lower cost knife, so good on them. Uh, moving on to another stat gear, the uh, Asus, the Asus. So this knife here just looks like a i bring it up. This reminds me so much of the Sanren, it's bigger, but it reminds me so much of the Sanrenmu 605, I think it is, um, which is that blade there. Just really, really similar. Um, I don't know, I know the end is squared off and whatnot, but yeah, it's a micarta handle. Um, what steel are they putting this one? It's like gonna be out of D2 or 440C. So yeah, just very much kind of, Feel just like they're sort of not drop shipping entirely, but definitely um, yeah, outsourcing their designs. Yeah, D2. Uh, it's a bigger knife, so three and a half inch blade. I'm sure it's fine. Um, but there you go. So what do you what do you want with these? How much they want for this guy? Uh, they want uh, Kickstarter on it. It's working. Thirty eight dollars or more again. So yeah, lower cost stuff. So interesting. Stat gear, this is the ledge. This one, I saw this knife and I just immediately thought of how annoying it would be to sharpen. Um, so look at the ledge here, let's find a picture of it. It's like a Kiridashi-esque, um, being sold as like a world legal kind of knife. Um, just this bit here where you, there we go. Kind of a smaller knife again, all of the shill sites and, and just knives, knife sites that sell knives. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure Blade HQ sold um, Quartermaster as well. <laughs> so, you know, hey, and I've got some exposure, I guess is what they're saying. Um, right, so yeah, I just look at this and think, man, sharpening that, yikes. And yeah, again, just zooming in on that spine. This is just kind of low at level stuff. $29 US early pledge. Cool. Right. Um, so yeah, it's company stat gear. I don't know what to think about them. They seem just very much, it's just an interesting business model, I guess, this kind of fund each knife as you go. You've got your brand, stat gear kind of sounds very like paramedic kind of stat gear, 
Um, and they largely do just seem to be kind of um, uh, Shenzhen Chinese knives. Moving on to some clips. Oh, there are just so many of these damn clippy kind of knives here. Again, really unimpressive edge on the on the, <laughs> the starting shot there. From Dapper Design, again, that sort of whole um, Dapper Dan's your man, you know, that whole very, kind of still clinging on to the hipstery sort of thing that was big about 2013. Um, they reached their goal, good on them, $39 again, so nothing crazy here. Uh, suspension hook and knives, these never did it for me, like these hook onto your belt loop kind of knife key fob things. But this is one suspension, suspension, yeah. That's how you spell it. <laughs> I was never, I never jumped on the key bar. All that, any of that sort of stuff just didn't do it for me. But these, they're expertly engineered using grade five titanium. Comes right after four. You've got um, a few video demonstrations. Kickstarter is a nice looking site to navigate. It really is. You get some good stuff. You've got a few. Lots of these guys. Lots of these companies send stuff out to guys like me. I haven't done any of them. Ah. Uh, Ever oh, I I did a key ring once when I was probably about a thousand subscribers, but I don't do this stuff anymore because you get it and generally they just send you thousands of messages afterwards and just like nah, no thanks. So there we are. Who's it for? Hell, anyone? I bet. Let me. Anyone? Yep, everyone. It's for everyone. There we go. Cool. So yeah, this one's looking. Oh, it's four forty C on the blade. Um, I'm guessing, unless these things scream at you that they're made in America, they're generally made in the um, Asian continent somewhere, which is fine, but it's kind of, it's this business model where you really get, I think you must do a small run with one of the Chinese manufacturers. They make it for you and you go, cool, I'll sell it through Kickstarter. They're probably already all made for five bucks each, and then you just do your Kickstarter and pick who you sell them to, I guess. I'm speculating here, I might be wrong. On Instagram, cool. So 2018, and it looks like they are shipping. Oh, they've shipped. Good on them. So it looks like you just order now. Oh, that's good. So they've actually found some success. Good on you, Clip. Not for me, but congratulations. Uh, this is the Pry Pryobite. Prylobite. Oh, font choice. Yikes. That's one step above papyrus, y'all. <laughs> but who can I? Criticize when these guys have made twenty-seven thousand dollars of their seven thousand dollar goal. Uh, it's a, it's not a bad looking thing. Again, it's kind of got the key hook friction folder thing going on. Very mechanically simple, um, kind of do daddy, great Father's Day sort of presents. You know, there you go. Uh, but yeah, this one is again doesn't move millimeter, doesn't move me a millimeter. But it's a bottle opener. It's a knife. It's a, it's a Kershaw. What was that thing called? The Kershaw Rumble or Ruckus or whatever. It's that. So oh, look, hey, that mysterious tier we are almost at. Not quite though. Blue Analyzing has just become an option. You ruckus fans there. Risks and challenges. Factory we've chosen has a well-established reputation. Yeah. Always a small risk of timeline delays. We'll get to those later. One of these I moved on to is just, it's, it's fire. It, it's the best. You know, moving on to Lyra. This thing just looks ridiculous. This is like a proper, this is like a transformer. Starts with a little medallion size thing. Horizon knives, um, $80 US for one of these. Sort of, I think Gerber's had a couple of things that look very similar to this. Um, again, it's a tiny little blade, it's not for me. I'm assuming it's D2, yep, D2 knife steel. I really am just kind of shooting this fast and loose, dude. So uh, it's all metal design, it's good. We've got, again, Gear Patrol, Knife News, all the, all the advertising companies have uh, taken their money and advertised for them. <laughs> so there we are. There's a mechanism there. It's kind of, you know, it's got that cool, remember that CRKT Karambit that went gangbusters last year? It's kind of got that factor to it. So I kind of see it. These things sell to people who are kind of casually interested. Whoa, thick ass blade though. Look at that chunky boy. Damn. All right. <laughs> Well, it's a little pry bar as well. How's that? So yeah, that one is definitely not for me at all. Horizon knives, but it's the only nano EDC knife. I think Boca would probably disagree with you, but there you go. Now moving on to a couple of just completely unremarkable looking knives. This just looks like a Ganzo knife. It's even got that shiny carbon fiber that 
Ganzo always has. This is Edge Kinju. Make it sound kind of Japanese for that sort of Japanese clout. Um, yeah, it's going to be a Chinese knife. It's created by zero, zero Hour Travel. VG10 on the blade, so possibly the best blade still we've seen so far. Maybe matched with the D2 on all of the other ones. Uh, 50 bucks for the mini keychain knife, which is the tiny one. And $100 for the Kinju pocket knife. So they say Japanese VG10 steel blade. Yep, VG10 is a Japanese steel, but yeah. I mean, all right, but I don't know why you'd choose $100 on that in VG10 when it's kind of not really doing much apart from having some weird cutouts in the uh, shiny uh, carbon fiber type material. So there you go. Just lots of talking, lots of talking. Kickstarter, man, they just talk and talk. Uh, then moving on to Chit Knives, CH. This is just, they are kickstartering a ripoff of the Alamic, um, the Alamic Wayfarer. So <laughs> there you go. I mean, it's not exactly right, but I mean, Chit Knives. Uh, um, so that one's there. I should probably stop talking about that one because, I don't know, it's, uh, that's gloomy, gloomy to me, that sort of stuff. I don't like it. Now, <laughs> moving on to these guys. So these are two that have kind of just gone a bit unusually. <laughs> so this Mars guy here, this Mars knife, this has just got the best comment section ever. So it's 2016 was when this started and it's still not being delivered as far as I can tell. Um, and it just looks so 2016, does it? It's got all that kind of Rimbled and the Grimsmo Norseman where Nick's, Nick Shabazz's channel just came out and that was everyone's knife. It's kind of like that cross with the emerging Warncliffe trend. It's a nice looking knife. I'll, I'll give them him that much mu that much on that. Comes with a pry tool as well, um, but it just it just stops. Um, Three hundred and eighty bucks. So everyone on this Kickstarter has at least that sunk into it. And then you click to the comments. One hundred and forty six of them. <laughs> and we're going to introduce now the hero of this story. His name is Brian Gibson. <laughs> so Brian Gibson. Um, he has been the voice in the darkness on this knife here. You just go through these Kickstarters um, and you start, you know, there's always a bit of, you know, the knife will be a couple of weeks late, right? And people start shitting the bed straight away. And that's the nature of retail and the customer is always right in that mindset. But kind of think these people, if they haven't got the knives four years after they're supposed to have them, maybe they have an eggs to grind. So anyway, a hero has emerged in this tale. We've got Brian Gibson's come to the forefront. Um, just going down to like the last 50 comments, starts off really promising. This comment's been removed by Kickstarter. <laughs> so might have gone a bit more colorful than usual. Um, any updates, asks George and Chip Chip and Chip Chip. Um, Balzano, the creator, has come on update posted. Um, <laughs> people have forgotten about it. Uh, <laughs> then Brian Gibson comes back. Paul, I hope Santa brought you herpes for Christmas. <laughs> And then he's obviously had maybe there's been a rocket to him or something. I don't feel a need to be respectful and considerate since you haven't shown any of your customers the same. Any updates, any updates, any updates, any updates, any you get the picture. So this might be a bit of a cautionary tale about backing some of these, but I mean, it's still here. So I don't know, does Kickstarter take them down if they just literally steal money and run away? What do you have to do? I don't know enough about this, but um, <laughs> Brian Gibson's back. It'd be best for everyone if you didn't exist. <laughs> uh, fake updates. Or, yeah, I mean, I don't know this process. I don't know the makers. I don't know any of these people. But this is a this is something to, I guess, if you're thinking of investing in any of these, jump to this one first as your cautionary tale. I hope these people get their knives. This feels like, I imagine, and this isn't advocating for the whoever's making this knife, but Imagine that feeling. It's like when you know your homework was due like a week ago and you keep like, you know, I remember doing this when I was in high school, right? You'd be all, ah, oh, I just need to, oh, you know, I tried to bring it in, but my USB stick didn't work. Oh, you miss, I'll, I'll bring in a new USB tomorrow. It'll be fine. You go back, bring it forward. Oh, I miss um, my Mac, um, the formatting. Um, I can't, look, I'll just give me, I've got to get some money off my dad and I'll get another USB and I'll be able to bring it from home. No, no, it's too big to just be able to email you, miss. I'm sorry. And then, uh, um, yeah, I know it's a week late, miss, but... Uh, what's happened is there was a error with the internet and so it's like that it might, and it's a horrible feeling when you when you're the one who's fucked up and you owe someone something uh, it, it is a shitty feeling and this is like 
on a much smaller scale. This is why I've stopped doing lots of like loans and back and forth and agreed reviews and things because the feeling of deadlines gives me so much stress. Kickstarter, I would never do. Even if I designed enough, I was going to be guaranteed as a hit. Just the deadlines, oh, just sounds terrible. So <laughs> these people are not happy. At any rate, the Mars, a pretty nice, if you know, circa 2016 looking knife. But there is a story there, that's for sure. And then moving on to the Necronaut. This is, um, I saw heaps of my EDC buddies um, check out the Necronaut. I mean, as a piece of something, it's a really, it looks like a cool thing. But there's lots of reasons I wouldn't want this as a knife. Like this huge gap, a Tanto with that shape just doesn't speak to me at all. This guy, I just always see in all of his Instagram communication, he always does the spaced out writing aesthetic. It's all very kind of high art, as high art as you can get with this sort of stuff anyway. But it always fucks up the formatting, so it like knocks it down to the next page because it doesn't count it as a full word. So it's like a whoops. Um, and you know, there's Instagram, there's no Instagram, there's uh, Kickstarter speak. Arcane Design LLC was formed out of the desire to explore the unknown and discover its aesthetic. So whatever that means, that's what this company makes knives about. But again, it's a cool looking thing. It's made by Riate. So it's going to be well made, but definitely not for me. I'm not sure. I, all my Instagram messages just go. I'm not sure if I've talked to this person or not. I'm sure he's lovely, but um, certainly not for me. But this one didn't work out anyway. Almost 400 bucks again. I mean, Riyats are expensive, but it's it's a bit odd. Like, it's a bit... It's, again, it's a cool-looking piece, but... Too jazzy? Yeah. Yeah, too jazzy. And, yeah, just the... To me, it's a bit much. This, this kind of fantasy sci-fi aesthetic, to me, doesn't really link up with knives that much. I know that's what they're really trying to do. The arcane story is, you know, fascination for the future, getting photos of yourself taken like this. It's just, yeah, it's a, it's a bit much for me, but what a cool looking blade. Like, it's a cool looking object. Absolutely. But interesting. But yeah, I just saw like Slicey and Eugene and all them and Metal Complex. Lots of my contemporaries do a video on this. Um, but yeah, just not for me. Not for me. But I think he's still selling these in a different way now, which is probably the best. Just do smaller runs, perhaps, because it's... That's about as niche as you can get, it really is. The, my main concern, just going back to being a, yeah, I get, it's so dumb because I, I have all these knives that I barely use as much as I should and I'm always thinking, oh boy, if I use that, that long flipper tab's gonna, you know, that chisel, that not chisel, that flat tanno belly is gonna conflict with that dead space under that flipper tab, whatever, but that's me. Then looking at a couple of cool ones, all right? So the, I'm not all doom and gloom. In fact, the Necronaut was cool enough looking as well. This actually looks kind of cool. These, and there's a buttload of these again as well, these utility knives, but it's kind of cool. Like, it's like a ring pop utility blade, like the Gerber EAB light kind of thing, but with a slidey ring, it's got a got a hammer kind of, look at this, show you a hammer smashing into it. There you go, look at that, bunk. Has some kind of rudimentary look on it. It's impressive. I like it. And then moving on to one. This is a Kickstarter that I actually took part in. Now he's just back to purchasing him because he did his run and it did well. I was one of these 51 backers. Gary Creeley's CPM Rex 121 Mako Blade. I recommend Creeley as a maker. And this is the platform at its best. He needed some investment to go and buy that Rex 121. It's expensive, weird still to get. So as a standard knife maker, it's not just like buying a bunch of, you know, 1084 or something. So this is where it works the best. And you could get enough capital down to have everyone go with a really good leather sheath. These were pricey. Yeah, it was about, it ended up being about 350 Australian dollars. So 249, yeah, that's probably what I paid. Um, I think he actually upsold me to getting a crewwear version as well, which ends up giving to Dave, my steel charts guy, because Dave has done so much for me in the channel. And yeah. But anyway, and I still have a, a, a Mako in Nitro 77 as well. So this is Kickstarter at its best, a blade like this. I'll end on a positive note because, um, yeah, Gary's Kickstarter campaign was quite successful. I think he got him out at a, in a pretty good time frame. Um, let's see the comments. Make sure they're not too scathing. <laughs> Give me my money back. Um, oh, no, there's a couple. There's a couple of people. Who, oh, this is two years ago, though. But they've stopped two years ago. So... And only backers can post comments. So you can imagine that after Bo commented, he must have got his knife fairly quickly. So that's cool. But 
again, this is Kickstarter, and look, it's mainly Bo. Oh, and there's mailing issues, but then all that stuff. There's risks involved with Kickstarter, is what I'm saying. And just moving to Indiegogo, interesting Kaiser, like the large Chinese knife company Kaiser that's been around for years, they're doing a Kickstarter run of the Cyber Blade. Now, the word cyber has had a resurgence in 2020. I haven't heard the word cyber since back in like 2001 using MIRC, asked, being asked if I wanted to cyber by 42-year-old guys pretending to be 15-year-old girls. But cyber is back well and truly. This is a knife modeled after the cyber truck, and they're unashamedly saying that. So uh, it's designed by Red Panda Create, manufactured by Kaiser. It has a positively cavernous thumb opening. Like looking at those photos there, you your thumb would fall through that. So uh, it is aesthetic all the way, and it's actually a bit bigger than I thought. So I'll get a, there's a shot of it in someone's hand down here. Look at that. That's a chunky boy. It's got like all sorts of broadness and oddness going on there. Um, I am going to go out on a limb and say probably not for me, but it's funny how Kaiser, as kind of generic as they seem to be, you can generally pick a Kaiser knife. I think it's the color that they do, the titanium or something. But anyway, um, yeah, it's like, a, a hair above like a mantis knife to me or like a yeah it's that's that's not really um hitting any of my spots but it's met its target not everything is for me believe it or not as you know i'm a child of the individualism movement and i even understand sometimes that not everything is for me so this is definitely for 77 other people which is less people than i thought it would be to be honest but it's 822% more than I thought. That $922 is a very small goal. That's like three of these things. How much do they want? Okay. Whew. So this is a Hong Kong-based project. Righto. So I saw the 534, and I'm like, oh, you guys must have money like ours. It isn't worth as much as it looks because we're the same. So it's, it's 100 Australian dollars, so it's like 60 US dollars, which for S35 and titanium is actually a good price, and I think it's S35 VN. It is, yeah. You know what? It's it's good value, at least, I would say. But hideous is an adjective that is jumping into my head. So there we go. Interesting to see that Kaiser are doing this, because often, I mean, I always just, <laughs> that Kaiser must have seen this design, right? Because <laughs> Kaiser are kind of known for the company that, They'll make your design. They don't care who the fuck you are or what it looks like. It's like, yeah, we're Kaiser. We'll make it. They're like the Netflix of knife companies. You know, you've got a weird idea. Get, get Kaiser to make it for you. Um, so, yeah, they, even this guy, they must have been like, ah, I tell you what. How does Kickstarter sound? <laughs> the guy must have been like, whoa, this is Kaiser telling me to we'll go Kickstarter. <laughs> anyway, it is a very odd design. Definitely banking on the success of the Cybertruck and the Cyber... What's the other Cyber thing coming out? Cyberpunk 2077. This is the knife to have in your pocket when you drive your Cybertruck to, you know, the game store to get your copy of Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I am assuming next knife will be a Keanu Reeves themed knife entirely from Kaiser. So there we go. Interesting to see a bigger company go in this direction, but it is definitely not a direction that I will walk with them. Sorry, Kaiser. There we are, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed. Look, I can do more of this if you enjoyed me trawling the interwebs and seeing what knives folks are pitching on these, you know, donation sites. Um, I just figure, hey, I put a video out. People jump straight into my comments, tell me how gay I am. Spoilers, apparently it's very gay. And um, it's just a part of the creative process. You put something out there, folks will tell you if they like it or not. And... Um, that's, I guess that's what I'm doing. Hopefully I wasn't too offensive to anyone who has made these things and has their heart and soul sunk into the latest stat gear um, uh, innovation, but whatever. There it is. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.